Welcome back. I'm Carrie Wilson here again with Pastor Kyle, and we're joined today with Spencer and Olivia Martin. So glad to have you guys here. Spencer and Olivia both serve and work for our college ministry, and we actually did college ministry together, gosh, probably like four years ago. It seems so long ago. Um, You guys are in the middle of A18 right now. Do you want to share a little bit about that? Yes, I'd love to. So Acts 18 is uh, our six-week summer-long discipleship project. The first week, the students spend a week here. We have lots of developmental programs, sessions, things of that nature just a couple days ago, or or recently rather. Um, Kyle shared on Christ and culture. He also shared on the concentric circles of leadership. So we've got lots of development while they're here in Winston-Salem. And then while they're here, we also want them to get exposure to some local missions opportunities. And so our students are going to partner with David Parsons and do some mission in the city. And then we also want them to get a glimpse of what it looks like to serve the local church here. So the first week they're here. The second week we are in Charleston serving Harbor City Church there, just trying to serve them however they need. We're going to provide child care. We're going to help with a volunteer night. We're going to do evangelism on a beach, lots of fun stuff. And then we're back here week three and the first part of week four, more developmental sessions. And then from the middle of week four through the end of week five, the students are overseas in either Malaysia or India. And then last week, we call last week, sin resend week, Mm. where we basically talk to the students about, all right, what has the Lord done in your life this summer? And then what does it look like for you to be resent back to the college campus Mm -hmm. to make disciples this fall? And so it's really a great opportunity. We've got 14 students who are part of it this summer and then two students who are overseas all summer. So it's been great. Kyle, I'd love to hear from you briefly before we dive in, dive in, not die in. We are not dying today. We <laughs> talked about death a couple weeks ago. Mm. Um, I would love to hear from you quickly before we dive in really about why programs like A18 so, can be so catalytic for a college student. Yeah, well, I, I got to give credit to Spencer, Olivia, their team for, for building this. I mean, again, to I sound like a broken record. record. Uh, for many years, I was part of Campus Outreach. What we found was that catalytic events. They just, they're catalytic and key for a reason. I I really deeply believe in these events because you get people out of their normal environment. And I don't know what you would say. In my experience, we used to do an eight-week project. So you guys are doing a six-week project. And we felt like we got more time with those, in those eight weeks, then we would get in the entire year with the students. And and then I just think that God uses these moments sometimes to re-clarify, call people, and then it really invigorates, as you guys know, your fall semester. Yes, that's, absolutely. That's so good. Well, I just wanted to take a moment to talk about that since we're here in the middle yeah. of A18. But really, um, excited to dive in today, going to do something a little different. Um, Kyle, you've just preached on 1 Corinthians 6, and honestly, you don't talk a lot about the topic we're going to be talking about today in your message, but what we want to do is just go to the Word and see how it can apply to every area of our life, even the areas that maybe the Bible doesn't have as much directly to say about. So today we're actually going to be talking about dating. That's something I know you guys talk about all the time with your college students, Mm. Uh, a topic you are well-versed in. I'm sure you needed no time to prepare today. Mm. And so excited for us to hop in. Before we do that, though, I know we've got to have some funny first date stories Mm. in here. Anybody have one to share? I have one, yes. (laughs) Um, So I went on a first date in college, um, and the guy who asked me, we went out for Thai food. And I think he thought that it would be impressive to get Thai hot, the spice, um, on his pad thai. I got mild. I'm like, I don't like spice. And we were talking, and I see, you know, sweat dripping down his face, and he's, like, (laughs) wiping his upper lip, and he's, like, drinking a lot of water. (laughs) Eventually, I was like, do I need to offer him some of my food? Like, I feel awkward. Um, So definitely an awkward first date. There were dates that followed that, but obviously that ended at some point. Um, but yes, very, very that awkward. That is not the awkward first date story I thought you were going to tell. Well, was which it, one uh, did, did you, you think? I thought she was going to talk about our first date, which was not that awkward, but we <laughs> had a fairly normal start to our first date. We went to The Loop here in Winston-Salem, great restaurant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good because you don't have to leave a tip on the first date. It's not too nice, but it's nice enough. Yeah, yeah. Very good first date location. Well, we went there, and then afterwards, we wanted to continue to spend some time together. And so... We were like, well, where should we go? And Olivia was like, well, maybe we should go to a brewery or a bar or something like that. And I was like, well, I was like, I don't really drink very often. (laughs) Maybe we could go to Barnes and Noble. And so, because <laughs> so, we had so, ordered dessert at, we already had dessert at dinner. So, so that was what was okay. like We couldn't do yeah. drinks, we couldn't do dessert. So then he was like, why not Barnes and Noble? Yes. And I was like, okay. So we went to Barnes and Noble and sat there and talked for 
another hour and a half or so and had a great time. And here we are. Barnes & Noble led to this. And, and there's more to that story, but we've already told it on another <laughs> podcast. Yes. So you well, just what, one of the things listen. is that you guys, I think we've said this many times, but just to say it one more time, you guys were the first uh, couple to meet on our launch team, date, yep. get engaged, get married, yes. and have kids. I'm still waiting on that plaque. They, they, we need to give it to be in our office, but and, yes, that is correct. And probably responsible for the most couples that have started through Ooh. setups at Two Cities. Probably. How do you think about that? Do you feel like, guys, do you feel like, uh, is there too much risk in trying to set people up, like doing matchmaking? Do you feel like, oh, there's too much of a downside, or is this something that you look forward to? If you go about it the right way, I think there's yeah. tons of upside. As long yeah. as you don't get weird about it, as long as you're not pressuring people, as long as you're willing to take no as an answer, yeah, I okay. think that people usually appreciate it when you try to just help them out because a little, people, a little nudge. That's yeah. right. It's like people yeah. all the time, they're, they're interested. If they're single, they're usually interested in meeting someone. And if, especially if I know them and yeah. this other person, if I'm like, Hey, I think this could work. Yeah. Then well, usually Brie, open Brie on our staff, uh, yes. it was, it was <laughs> last year's woman's event yes. where she gets up on stage and then there's a lady in our church, uh, who says, my younger brother is single and I think might be interested in her. And, and anyway, and, you know, less than a year later, they're married. I know. And, yes. so and, and I take rest. responsibility because I said that Brie would be the best host for that event. Yes. And now she has a husband. So. Well, one of the neat things uh, about our church is, and this is true of any church or, or different organizations, but you just think about all the marriages that wouldn't take place if yes. we didn't plant this church. Uh, I mean, they would have married other people. I don't know how that works in the sovereignty of God. But you just, you just think about... We didn't plant the church. You guys mm-hmm. didn't meet. We didn't plant the church. Bree never gets on stage. No. I mean, it's just a weird mm-hmm. thought. And one of the one of the exciting things about I think one of the healthy signs of a healthy church is lots of marriages and lots of babies being born. So it's yeah. exciting. Yeah, it's cool. You set me up with my first boyfriend in Winston Salem. You were part of setting me up with my husband here in Winston Salem. Yeah. So lots so of I history failed. here. You were successful. <laughs> yes, that's, that's okay. Um, all that aside, there's a lot of ways that we go about dating. They're just a little goofy. Like Christians can just kind of take things to some weird places when it comes mm. to dating. I'm curious, like, what are some of the things that you guys are seeing in your college ministry mm. that you're helping people navigate through? Just like some of the weirdness. Mm. Olivia? Yeah, I I would say just surrounding a first date. Um, huh. We're really goofy about whether it's um, guys, I think, not being willing enough to ask the girl on a first date soon enough. They okay. need to, like, go around, see, you know, through the guy, friends, if, like, the girl's interested, like, do all this, like, you know, talking to other peers versus just talking to the it. girl directly. Mm-hmm. And then I think from the girl's perspective, often we see either just, like, unwilling to go on a date when asked um, or kind of thinking, all right, can I marry this guy before I'm even willing to go yeah. on a date with him? So just trying to take mm-hmm. like the pressure off on both, mm-hmm. both ends, trying to normalize going on a date and like going on one date and maybe it didn't go well. And it's like, okay, we can still be like brothers and sisters in Christ and coexist in community and it'd be okay. So I think we're just goofy when it comes to even just that first date. Yes. That's the exact same thought I had. People want to have a high level of certainty mm-hmm. that they will marry this person before they're even willing to go on one date. Yeah. And so we really do need to normalize, hey, just go on one date. Yeah. It's not a huge deal. No. We're all adults here. Yeah. If you go on a date and it doesn't work out, that's okay. You guys can continue to be cordial towards each other. Mm-hmm. It's not going to be that awkward. One of the things we say here is that we we take God's word seriously, yeah. but we don't take ourselves too seriously. And I think that Christians often take themselves way too seriously well said. when it comes to dating. It's like, hey, it's like, well, just go on a walk yeah. with a girl and talk with her and have some intentional conversation yeah. and just see what happens. And if either of you are not interested about continuing to move forward, that's fine. But if you are interested in moving forward, you can just keep on moving. And so that's great. we just need to normalize yeah. going on a first date and normalize it just not working out and just moving on. Yeah, and a date is an opportunity to get to know another person. Yes. We just have to go in with that intent. We're getting to know another person. It may or may not work out. Act, just enjoy the actually like just being there in the moment and present instead of like a lot of my girlfriends and myself in the past where it's like we're, we're looking like five, ten years down the line and we haven't even made it through the first 15 minutes of the date. You you're, know? you're writing his last name. How does this sound? Yes. Does this yes. Yes. <laughs> That's right. yes. I'd, I'd actually be very interested to know how long has it been since you went on your first date? Oh. Mr. Kyle. You mean first with date? Margie. Okay. With Margie. I was like, ever? Um, Hopefully none since then. Yeah. No, no, no. no. <laughs> uh, you know, our first, it's interesting because we met at a summer beach project, an A18 kind of thing. Okay. Um, and then we did, it's interesting, you know, our first date is, man, that would be 2009, I think. Mm. So a long 
15 years ago. It's when I graduated so, high school. Yeah, there you go. So it was, I, I, well, that's interesting. I'm sitting here in this conversation being like, I'm feeling old. <laughs> like, I'm thinking, I'm like, okay, how does, like, I, I, this is like old thoughts. I'm like, how is social media affecting dating? I'm thinking like, because yes. I've never, I'm not against online dating. We could talk about that. You know, we, mm-hmm. we've had several of our pastors on our staff meet their spouses online. Through eHarmony. Through eHarmony. Is that, is that even around I don't anymore? think anyone meets anyone through eHarmony. Okay, yeah. <laughs> well, now there's a lot more apps. And yes. there's, and like I've heard, is, isn't there like a bagel? There's like, isn't there? Bagel? I don't know if ba- Coffee Meets Bagel is still a thing. Coffee I've tried meets, every single okay, one of them. Yeah. So you can ask me some well, questions. Well, no, no, no. I just know that, that a lot of probably young men, and, I, and that'd be interesting. I'd be interested to know the, the stats on how many men are on these things versus how many women are on these things. Mm-hmm. Um, but they're just, it's swipe. It's, I know there's Christian ones. There's, mm-hmm. you know, Farmers, well, I mean, there's there's all these different ones. So, so I, I just I was thinking about this when I was knew we were talking about this uh, topic that I think most Christians have met their spouses in their local church at a young age. Like on, when we go back more yeah. than fifty years, it's like that's yeah. just how people met. And so it, I, I have a lot of compassion on on our, this generation. It's very transient. You live mm-hmm. one place, you move somewhere else. You go to college somewhere else. You you we're, we're chasing a job, yeah. the good and bad of that. And so it's a lot of people, I think one of the things about dating that's interesting, and I heard someone say this, that you only, this is not to discourage anyone, you normally only get about three to six chances at having a significant romantic relationship yeah. in your life. Like, and, and so if you think back on your life, that's that's a lot of people's story. Mm-hmm. Whether they got married or they didn't get married, they mm-hmm. kind of look back and go, well, yeah, there was that one guy in high school and there was the one girl in college or the guy in college. And anyway, my whole point is it's, it's so... I think we have to help. I'm excited about this conversation today because I yeah. think we have to help people. One of the things the Bible does not clearly talk about, like give what by, by this I mean doesn't give us a formula, yeah. is how to go from single to being someone's spouse. Mm-hmm. And I think there's some wisdom, obviously God's wisdom in that, and and there's been only a few ways people have tried to do that. Yeah. And we can mm-hmm. talk about that, but I think we need to try to come alongside them. Yeah, well, let's talk about that. What are some of the difficulties of dating in this age? Hmm. I think one of the difficulties is that most people... 30 or younger have spent a ton of time on devices for yeah. their entire childhood That's and true. and really their early adulthood and it's made them much less comfortable mm-hmm. speaking with someone from the opposite, opposite sex. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is probably the main one is, is that we have found in our college ministry that sometimes young 18-year-old 19-year-old men feel unbelievably uncomfortable when talking it's with strange, women. But yes, you're right. Like like more so than you would probably think is healthy. You know, yeah. everybody feels a little bit nervous, but a lot of people just feel very uncomfortable. So that would be one of the challenges mm-hmm. of this generation. Hmm. I think uniquely, you would think this would be positive, but I think there's a numbers problem too. You know, you have all these opportunities to swipe on these apps, endless possibilities, and it creates this mindset that maybe there's something better if I just keep looking. Mm-hmm. Like this, this mindset of like, I'm never going to be satisfied with an individual, which is kind of a dangerous situation to be in. And I think a lot of times too, um, not that women aren't on the negative side of this, but they see that the impact of that, whereas they're not getting asked out on dates or maybe someone asks them on a date and then they're like ghosting them and they're not hearing from them again because mm. just, it's it's like all the ice yeah. cream flavors are available out there and you can go for whatever you want, you know? I don't know. Any thoughts mm. about other difficulties? No, that's good. I mean, that was my my thought. My word that popped in my head when you asked that question was choice. I just mm-hmm. feel like there's an enormous amount of, at least perceived choice. Yeah. There's, mm. you know, you go to college and you're like, oh, there's a thousand people in my freshman class mm-hmm. and that means there's probably 600 women in this class and and so I think I don't know we can get into this maybe unrealistic standards unrealistic mm-hmm. expectations while still holding I mean I think something we should talk about today is what to look for mm-hmm. in that person yeah and not to compromise on some of those things um, but at the same time not have such a high standard well, let's that ta- no one meets it let's talk about that we'll go ahead and get into the text just for a second yeah. and that'll fuel the rest of our conversation because right. Kyle is right the who of it all is really important who are we looking for um, what qualities should they hold and I think 2 Corinthians 6 though it's not explicitly talking about dating or marriage can give us some good places to start mm-hmm. if we look at 2 Corinthians 6 14 through 15 it says do not be unequal yoked with unbelievers for what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness or what fellowship has light with darkness what accord has Christ with Belial or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever mm-hmm. what can we see in this passage that we could apply to this season of dating that a lot of people in our church are in what's well, interesting Paul Paul basically right there he he makes the statement don't be unequally yoked which mm-hmm. is he's quoting Deuteronomy 22 which is talks about don't 
yoke the the donkey with the ox yeah. and it, they're different sizes they're one's a clean animal one's not a clean animal uh they have different gates they walk differently they won't be as effective they actually would be more effective separately than they would be together and so and then he asks if you look there he asks five questions mm -hmm. they're all rhetorical and what he's getting at is there is such a big difference between the believer and the unbeliever and this this i don't i'm gonna i talked about this in my sermon but i mean I don't think we realize or embrace or feel how big of a difference there is between yeah. the Christian and the non-Christian, which is, I think, what leads us into dating the non-Christian uh, for a lot of, particularly for young women especially, mm -hmm. but young men too. And it's like, well, what, we, they focus on all the things they have in common or all the things they like about him or her, and they forget the massive... And Paul gives, hey, he says, one is light, one is darkness, yeah. one is in Christ, one's with the devil, one is righteous, one is lawless. And so I think it all starts with a big difference in understanding between the Christian and the non-Christian, which says I can't be unequally yoked. And, and I think we can't be unequally... We, this applies in, at one level, which is another podcast, to friendships. Yeah. Um, you know, I think you can have non-Christian friends, but... You should. With that. Yeah, you should. The one initiative. I think some would argue, as I've read about this, that it, it could apply to business partnerships. Just... Again, when you're talking about high level, long term, we're going to be real estate investment partners in the city. It's like, mm. well, we can, but just un realize at least the unequally yoked. And, and today we're talking about dating with it. Yeah, and that's where we start, right? Obviously, the person that you're dating or pursuing needs to be a Christian if your life is revolving or built around that. Um, but obviously, that's not where we stop. What What are some other things? I want to start with the negative version of this before we go to the positive. Obviously, you know, there are definitely there's definitely not a Mr. 100% right or a Mrs. 100% wrong, but there, I said that wrong, 100% right, but there's definitely a, a Mr. or Mrs. 100% mm -hmm. wrong. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And so what are those qualities or red flags that we should be looking for when we're trying to decide whether or not we should go on a date with someone? Hmm. No friends of the same gender. Yeah. Uh, you, you really would like a guy that has other f guy yeah. friends. You want a girl that has other female friends. That uh, To me, that's a big warning sign yeah. if they don't have that. What are some red yeah. flags you've seen, Olivia? Yeah, it's at, kind of building off what Kyle said. Um, whenever I meet with a girl who tells me about a guy she's met and he has no other Christian friends, mm -hmm. um, yeah. mm -hmm. that is... That is definitely a red flag because there's no one there who's going to be holding him accountable or checking in or encouraging him or you know, you know, telling him to pump the brakes or whatever it is. So being alone, um, not having, yeah, I feel like that can be more common maybe with guys, like not having as many guy friends. Mm -hmm. um, so Christian guy friends, I think that kind of, they have to work towards that, just like women too. But um, so that's definitely one. And then also if they're not connected to Christian community. Yeah. So it's not just do they have other Christian friends, mm -hmm. but like are they, are, is that guy connected to Christian community yes. um, who are, are seeing his life or speaking into his life, who he's inviting into his life. Mm -hmm. So that way his dating life is not private. That's um, good. So that's yeah, that's, th those are some big things. What are some things you're seeing, Spencer? That are red flags. Mm -hmm. I mean, th these guys have said done a great job. They need to have friends. I had a, I had a friend in college who um, he was dating this girl, and she was a Christian, clearly was involved in mm -hmm. campus ministry, but then we noticed over time that she didn't really seem to spend much time at all with other females her age, and mm -hmm. that was just something that was very alarming to us, even yeah. in college. It's like, wow, this girl, she seems to be walking with the Lord, but at the same time, she doesn't seem to be committed to a local church. She doesn't seem to have many friendships with women, and the ones that she does have... Yeah seem to be full of friction. And so this just doesn't seem quite right. And so there's usually a reason why yeah. women or men seem to have a lack of relationships. And it's yeah. certainly a red flag. No, that's good. And I think, too, we have to communicate what does Christian mean? Because one of the things that a lot of people deal with on this dating these dating sites, Kyle, is that, you know, you can put your religion and a lot of people will put Christian. But once you continue into the conversation, it's like, actually, they're not. And so, you know, one of the things I would do early on in the conversation is ask them what church they attend or, um, you know, we don't go on to the full, like, tell me your testimony over <laughs> like a chat message, but mm -hmm. then, like, what, what are you up to this weekend? Like questions that would facilitate finding out at least if they were connected to a local church body, um, some, some books or artists or different things that they listen to, because it's not always clear from that one word if someone's actually a follower of Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yeah, yeah, well, what are some attributes that we should be looking for? You've already hit some of those, but there's clearly more. What are some things we should be considering and praying for as we're looking for a future spouse? 
think self-control is a huge thing. So this applies to so many different areas of our lives. But I think that's something that, you know, is a big thing that's on my radar when I'm meeting with college girls about the guys they're dating. Is like, is he demonstrating self-control? Um, and yeah. this, I mean, like I said, can carry out in lots of different ways. Mm-hmm. But I think just in terms of, like, disciplined, um, is he able to kind of say no to things that are not glorifying to the Lord. So whether that's different social scenes. Mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. And obviously I think when you're talking about dating, there's you know physical boundaries, emotional boundaries where you're demonstrating self-control. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think just as a person, I think that is a big thing. Whereas you can't expect for someone to demonstrate self-control in marriage if they're not demonstrating Absolutely. it in dating. So that mm-hmm. is yeah. one of the that's big good. things that through the spirit, I think there's a lot mm-hmm. of grace that, that someone can grow in that. Mm-hmm. But I think something that I've heard was like, you can you can give someone grace and you can give someone encouragement, but you don't have to give them your hand, ladies, if they are not That's uh, good. demonstrating yes. self-control. That's good. Oh, yes, good. and this is a very biblical idea. I mean, in Titus 2, Paul is talking to older men and he says, older men, you should be this and this and this and this. He gives a handful mm-hmm. of different things. Yep. And then he says, older women, you should be this and you should teach younger women. And he gives multiple different encouragements to young women. Yeah. And then he says, younger men, See to it that you are self-controlled. Yep. And so good. really that is the probably the main mm-hmm. thing that we are encouraging, specifically yeah. young women who are in college, but even young men. It's like you need to be seeing whether or not this person can show that you are self-controlled or that they are self-controlled. Because what I tell college students all the time, you are going to have to be self-controlled until you die. Yeah. And if you are not self-controlled, then it is going to cause some really serious oh, problems yeah. in your marriage, That's in right. your family. Mm-hmm. Because what some students tend to think is, well... I'm just going to have to be self-controlled with my girlfriend until we get married. And then it it stops and it's like, actually, that is the exact opposite. (laughs) Once you get married, the stakes for your life and your personal ministry Mm -hmm. go up and up. Once Mm. you get married, the stakes go up. Once you have children, it's like, all right, the stakes go up. And so it's very important for both the guy and the girl in the dating relationship and the engagement Mm -hmm. relationship to prove that they can show the other self-control, whether it be physical boundaries or emotional boundaries. Yeah, that's um, good. Because if they're not able to, then it, it, it makes the other not be able to trust the person. That's, that's a big yeah. part of it is mm. if, if we see a young man stick to physical boundaries with a young woman, what he is doing is he is showing her that he can be trusted when it comes to his relationships with pretty much everybody else. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, that's really good. I mean, since you're hitting it, let's go there. You know, obviously some of this is some of this is up to the Christian conscience, not, not all of it, but what are some helpful boundaries you have found that you can communicate to young people who are dating Kyle? Any thoughts? Well, also, these guys are in it every day, but I mean, I, I think some, some of the principles uh, would be the connect, the principle would be the connection in the Bible between commitment and intimacy mm-hmm. that, you know, as commitment increases, and this is where we could talk a little bit about wisdom and yeah. Christian conscience and does anything change when you're engaged and you know some yeah. of those questions yeah, let's go but, there. but we can but um but I think that's the principle I think in general we need to realize that most people probably go too far um you know yeah. what I what I've tried to do as someone who did marriage counseling and I, I'm not saying I did this every time but I would normally ask people what are your boundaries yeah I wouldn't impose them. I wouldn't say these should be your boundaries, but I'd be like, you guys need to, you know, it's always usually, even mm-hmm. we have godly, godly people in our church, but, and I've done pretty much counseling outside of our church, but you know, it's normally an uncomfortable question to ask people. So yeah. part of it is just, hey, what are your boundaries? And then like the girl looks at the guy and the guy looks at the girl <laughs> and you're like, why don't you guys just talk about that? Next time we meet, you can, you know, and uh, and then some, sometimes you get like really clear boundaries yeah. and you're like, this is really helpful. Other times you're like, that. Sounds like a wishy-washy, yes. you know, mm-hmm. hope you can push through that and not have mm-hmm. to answer questions about it, boundaries. So, and, and um, but I would say, I'm repeating myself, I think in general, most, unfortunately, most Christians go mm-hmm. way farther physically than they ever thought they would. Yeah. I don't want to say most, ma- many. And then in, in feel, dating. and then in engagement, and then they feel have to guilt, pull it back. Yeah, they feel regret, they feel shame. Mm-hmm. There's, there's, it feels in some ways like we're not celebrating you know, the marriage as much yeah. and the uniqueness. Uh, there's mm-hmm. been less and less and less that has been saved for marriage mm-hmm. and that I uniquely associate with marriage, if that makes sense. No, that, that's really good. Any other practical tips or thoughts that you give to college students as you're talking to them? I know that Olivia is very passionate about emotional boundaries. You want to give Let's a, hear a spiel it. about yeah. that? Well, emotional boundaries are, are, t- are difficult um, because I think, it, it, they can mm. be hard to clarify. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that our, mm. you know, the accessibility to phones and texting oh. and, you know, 
DMing and I would say particularly texting though that that can develop emotional intimacy yeah. with somebody. Oh yeah. Um, and you're talking about future things, so I feel like there there's just an appropriate amount to be talking about a future with somebody, yeah. like a level of commitment. Um, and I think, you know, having a comfortability with what you've seen so far is like, you know, feeling more confident about moving in that direction. But I mean, I tell girls all the time where it's like, you know, we are more often to talk about things way too soon than to like hold off. Yeah. Um, hmm. And, you know, being careful about saying that you love somebody. Uh, yeah. I think that's a big thing. And I feel like there, there's, oh, there's, you know, that's a, people mm -hmm. are all over the spectrum in that there's yeah, grace. Yeah, yeah. And, but usually I just encourage, uh, ladies where it's like, you know, I, I think that we see like God's love is in the form of a commitment to yeah. people. Yeah. And so hmm. to pull out that you love someone out of a commit, like without a commitment, I that's think can good. just be very dangerous or risky. Um, and not saying that's wrong, but I think it just comes with a risk. So, uh, I, I caution people mm -hmm. I know to, to be careful about when yeah. they decide to tell someone else that they love, love them. Um, that's really good. and feel like that has been just a form of protection because mm -hmm. I think once you, once you get there, then, then this future yeah. with this person who you are saying that you love is just being built. When you guys didn't say I love you I don't think until Correct. you Correct. I, I did not say I love you to Olivia until I got on a knee and what? asked her to What marry else me. did you not do? There, there, so I actually did not kiss Olivia until about 40 days until we got married. Mm. So I got on a knee told Olivia I loved her asked her to marry me and we just hugged. We didn't kiss and I want to explain why because I actually am very passionate about this topic and I think it's important. Mm. There are acts of affection yeah. and then there are acts of desire. Mm -hmm. I, I would argue that acts of desire are to be reserved only for the covenantal marriage between one man and one woman for one mm -hmm. lifetime. We can have acts of affection mm -hmm. while dating and while you're engaged. You know, you think of acts of affection. It's yeah. like when a father kisses his daughter on the head or the cheek, whatever. Um, what we need to do is we need to just try to stay as far away from the line. Everyone wants to know, where is the line? How far is too far? Mm -hmm. Well... <laughs> The line is, very, I mean, there's only a very small amount of things that lie inside of the bandwidth of acts of affection. Yeah. And so yes. when I was in college, I had a guy who got married at a fairly early age, and he did not kiss his wife until like the week before they got married. And he encouraged me to do it. And I remember thinking that it was very strange. <laughs> and, but whenever I started dating Olivia, I was like, I really want to try to do this right. And mm -hmm. so we said, all right, after the third date, I've got to tell this brief story real quick. So after the third this date, this is the best okay, thing about it. After the third date, okay, um, the first, you know, no one thinks you're going to kiss after the first date, or at least in Christian circles, you don't. And then we had a second date, and then we had a third date, and we had not talked about physical boundaries mm -hmm. at all after the third date. And I can remember dropping Olivia off at her apartment, and I went <laughs> in for his, right this is his perspective. This is my perspective. <laughs> I went in for the hug, and I was like, oh gosh, I hope that she doesn't think I'm going to kiss her because I'm not. And so I like turned my head just so far to the left. <laughs> And, and, and then gave her a hug. And then that night, I called Olivia and I said, hey, I was like, I'm not saying that I don't want to kiss you. I'm not saying that I don't, I don't want to keep dating, but I just want to let you know that I have no intention of kissing you anytime in the foreseeable future. I may have not said it very warmly. She would actually weigh in on this. But I basically set the tone from the beginning. Hey, when I spend time with you, I'm not trying to get something from you. That's so good. I'm trying to get to know you. And last thing I'll say about this is I have counseled multiple young men to consider not kissing mm -hmm. for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. The young men who say, okay, I'm going to stick to yeah. this. When they get married, they text me and they thank me. Or they send me a voice That's message and say, thank you for encouraging me to be self-controlled. But then on the other side of things, the guys who sort of chuckle at me, students will actually yeah. laugh at me and, and sort of make fun of me Aww. when I give them this yeah, encouragement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And what ends up happening is they'll circle back with me a couple months later. It's like, you're right. Yeah. They're, they're confessing to me that they went too far. And I will say our experience wasn't quite like yours, but it, it's not far off. Like Ben told me from the very beginning that he did not want to kiss me initially in our relationship. And I think it was two months before we were engaged that we had our first kiss. And he had kind of ar articulated too that he wanted to be able to be close to talking to me about marriage and knowing that he wanted to marry me before he kissed me, before he said, I love you. And so we didn't wait. So another option, but uh, I think yours is a good option. We didn't sure, wait till yeah. marriage, but I mean, we dated for like four months without ever kissing each other. And then I think once you enter into that, there's some good, here's the thing again, Christian conscience, but I think there's some clear things that we can do that can help us avoid falling into sin in our mm -hmm. dating relationships. One, 
never laying down, like committed in our relationship. We are not going to lay down and, and kiss each other. It's like that leads that leads nowhere good. If it doesn't lead anywhere, lead anywhere, at least leads the mind somewhere. Um, never after a certain amount of time. Like if he was at my house after midnight, there there was a weirdness there. Unless mm. there was a large group of other people there. Yeah, that's um, good. You know, sometimes when you have another roommate and around and you're out and about, and that's good. But honestly, even early on in the relationship, like the more you can be in public, I think the better than in private. I don't know. What are some other things that you've heard, those, Kyle? Those like are specifics? great. I mean, I think I think the principle of dating in community is, yeah. is huge. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, deciding how much time are we going to spend alone. Yeah, and you know that's that I, that can be. Uh, what I want to say about that. Yeah you can maybe not even get to know the real person if you don't get to see them in community. Mm-hmm. And so I would say it feels like early on, I don't want to get weird about it, you know, but you can da- you can go on individual dates, but spending a lot of time in group settings or yeah. with other couples or with some Absolutely. friends, I think is really helpful. I- I'm encouraged by this conversation. One, I thought those categories of desire and affection are fantastic. Um, and, and yeah, I think we want to just give people like maybe, maybe I don't know who will all listen to this podcast, but just some hope. I mean, yeah. you know, to go to my story real quickly, I mean, same thing. I, again, I came out of campus outreach, very strict dating, very yeah. strict. I've heard some in, 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 in the sense of like, stories. again, I love CO, but I'm saying like in the sense of almost too serious to the point where I think it hindered. A little bit what you guys were talking about at the beginning. It hinders some of the spontaneity because if you feel like if there's any interest, mm-hmm. you know, it kind of was drilled into my head, dating is for marriage. Dating is for marriage. Like, there's no such thing yeah. as casual dating. I mean, kind of that ver- – I'm not saying they said exactly that. But, you know, same thing. Didn't tell Margie I loved her till, uh we got engaged. Didn't kiss until we were engaged. And I, I don't say that to brag. We had our own faults and failures. Yeah. But I do think when you hear some of these stories, it, maybe it can encourage people. Mm-hmm. That, you know, like I remember this one guy, he's married already. He goes, you didn't kiss your wife till you were engaged. How'd you do it? <laughs> and it was, he's a Christian. He's just like, how'd you Jesus. do it? It's like, well, it's helpful. It's, it's like all things in life. It's helpful if you say this up front. Yeah. It's helpful if there's a little bit of a culture of this, maybe a little bit, you know, mm-hmm. where it's like, hey, this is, we're not trying to be overly puritanical or something. Yeah. But anyway. Well, and I think too, sorry, I'm talking a lot. I, f- I feel strongly about this. Yeah, this is good. Um. I'm learning a lot. I I think, too, one of the things that I would say to people, and I I tell young people all the time, is that you have the initial boundary conversation, and then you continually have the boundary conversation. Because as you grow in affection to one another, hopefully there is some desire starting to grow inside of you. It would be weird if if there was not, right? And so you have to continue having the conversation. And at some point, you may even have to draw the line even stricter, and and that's okay. Yeah, Yeah. I was also going to say that. I feel like... Um, my encouragement would be maybe to couples or individuals who feel like they have gone too far mm-hmm. in a relationship mm-hmm. that, um, I mean, I think with counsel, there can be a lot of, I, I think, you know, depending on the nature of like how often, there are just a lot of things there, but that you can, yeah, pull back on that. That's what I was going to say is I know couples who were kissing when they were dating and kind of continuing like to run into this, like, hey, we keep stumbling, we keep going a little yeah. too far, and we're giving in, you know, to acts of desire, and yeah. this is getting too heated, whatever. And we decided to take a step back and no longer kiss. It's not like a, you know, that doesn't mean you automatically have to break up because you've, yeah. you've covered, you cross these boundaries. So I think there is like grace there. But I would also say that, you know, if that is a continued ish, like issue that you're running into, like what is your community? What is it th- these mm-hmm. trusted girls or guys who you're talking to about? Like, are you seeking wisdom and are yeah. you listening to it? Um, cause that's another thing is you can have, you can tell people and you can receive all the wisdom, mm-hmm. but are you demonstrating self-control enough to keep to that boundary? Yeah. Um, because it is important for the person you're dating to be able to trust you to yeah. uphold. Yeah. That's good. Here's why being very clear about boundaries are very important to communicate on the front end is because once you are in the moment with your boyfriend, girlfriend, oh, fiance, yeah. whatever, this is the essence of sin. I know this is wrong, yeah. but I don't care. Yeah. And so that's why you have to be mm-hmm. very clear about your boundaries and avoid the situations that will lead to you feeling and yeah. saying that. That's good. Yeah. Because that's what happens is that people get, it's, it's 11 o'clock at night, we're tired. It's like, I know this is wrong but I don't care, it's, yeah. which is the, often the essence of sin. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, but I think it is good what you're saying. It's like if you cross the line, even if it's not a major line that you've crossed, just a line that you guys have set for each other that maybe is way way far back from even like sex or anything like that, mm-hmm. do not miss the opportunity to have that conversation with each other after that moment. Like, okay, that was further than we said that we would go. Mm-hmm. Can we yeah, talk right. about that? Right. And I, I think Ben and I, had a couple of conversations like that. Nothing like that we were ashamed of or felt like necessarily like we were being sinful, but we're like, is this wise? 
for the amount of time we have to wait, you know, yeah, to be yeah. married from mm-hmm. here. And there's grace in that. Like there, I, I think we're fearful of like the shame, but I think having those conversations also prepares you to have conversations about things in that area when you, when you are married and have more open communication about it. Mm-hmm. Um, what guys, let's talk about for a second too, though. I want to widen the the door here. What is some other advice you would give to you single people who would like to be dating and married one day? You can go anywhere you want with it. I, I, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, I know that Olivia has some encouragements to yeah. some encouragement to women who have an idealized view of their husband or who have maybe too high of a bar. Cause so we've already talked about some women yeah. maybe tempted to not have a high enough bar and mm-hmm. be tempted to date a non-Christian. Well, but yeah, we have found that maybe what's more common is that young women and young men, but specifically young women mm-hmm. have too high of standards for men to. What, what would those standards be? Can you talk about that? Yeah. Oh, oh <laughs> gosh. Um, I feel like, I mean, appearance is definitely one of yeah, them yeah. where sometimes, and Spencer and I have to laugh about, you know, just having too high of a standard of what you're looking for yeah. physically in somebody. Ryan um, Reynolds is taken. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> exactly. They might have problems with him too. Yeah, so, some of these girls. Yeah, that's a big one. I think, um, I mean, I feel like tied to that usually there's like, well, I want someone who's really good looking and really yeah. athletic and really, really smart and has a perfect family and, you know, also has a great job with a lot of income. Like I feel yeah. like you know, that would probably, we could probably, most people would probably say, this is my ideal or all of these yeah. things. Um, so I think at first it's kind of reevaluating about, um, I do think, you know, affection and attraction can grow. I'm not saying you need to be attracted to who you're dating, mm-hmm. but I don't think it needs to be this person's a 10 out of 10 in yeah. your mind. Um, so there, and that's a really weird thing to try to navigate with people yeah. uh, to just like converse about. But for some ladies, I'm like, just give him a chance. Like get yeah. to know him like that, like his personality, his godliness, like godliness is the most attractive thing to yeah. a Christian woman, hopefully. And so like seeing his godliness and seeing his self-control, seeing his like community of guys who just like love him yeah. and mm-hmm. are encouraging him, like those yeah. things will last way longer yeah. than a Ryan, Ryan Reynolds body. And like, so I think just trying to, you know, the, that, the, um, like how they look, but then also just some of the other categories, whether that's the money they make or hobbies, um, yeah. But I feel like looks are a constant thing Uh we we kind of come to. When I've always told people, because I I had to learn this myself, like it's like unless the person like repulses you and you really are just like, I can't stand spending time with this person. Mm -hmm. What is the danger in saying yes to a date, getting to know someone a little bit more, Mm -hmm. getting a little more practice? As long as you you see that like it seems like they're following the Lord, it's like what is there to lose? Maybe it's within the context of friendships and you want to navigate that carefully and be like, hey, we're in a friend group together. Like – you know, I'm willing to go on this date, but I want to make sure if nothing goes from here, you know, that we're going to be good. It's not going to be awkward. I've had that conversation before, but it's like, what do you have to lose? I did not think I was going to be interested in Ben. I mean, I did not ask for a picture. Spencer sent me a picture. Mm. I wish he had not sent You're me a welcome. picture. It oh, was not sorry. a great picture. Sorry. Guys, you do not take good pictures <laughs> of yourself. Fair. Get yes. one of your lady friends to approve first. Mm. And, and I was like, man, uh, like I'm not, He's not normally the type of guy that I like would be interested in. And he would say the same about me. He dated like full on blondes like before me. (laughs) But I went on the date and like he was the guy. He's absolutely the guy that the Lord had for me. So I think it just goes to prove it's like you just got to give guys a chance. Mm -hmm. And I think this is where the dating apps can definitely be detrimental. Is is you're only you are purely judging based on these photos for guys often aren't that great or they're like oddly too good and you're just like you take a lot of pictures of yourself <laughs> this strange. is a little strange so mm. it's like usually that's a red just, flag it's just yeah it's just a hard like it's just a really hard platform i think for yeah. guys pr- particularly mm. but mm-hmm. you're judging based on what five photos or whatever it's been a long time since i've been on a dating app but mm. like yeah so i think that's what just adds to i think the difficulty in yeah. dating that we t- talked on is just like the dating apps that are so prevalent are purely based on looks so. Yeah, that's good. Hmm. I, I'm curious, guys. Um, I think guys do this on the other side as well in some different ways. Even some, th- definitely with the physical appearance, but Christian guys a lot have very high expectations for what they're, the women they date should be like. I mean, sometimes the expectations are just like ex- way too extreme. Like this perfect person does not exist, right? What are some of the conversations you're having with guys or some of the things that you've seen? It's like they're maybe not aware of of like, 
who they are, maybe even in the girls. I don't know. I'm rambling, but how do we see this on the flip side with men? I would say that what men need to look for is they need to look for a partner for yeah. kingdom labor. That's good. That's what you're looking for. You're looking with someone that you can partner with to make disciples, to raise a family, to be best friends with forever. I tell couples all the time that marriage, I would love to be interested to hear you guys' <laughs> thoughts on this. Marriage is like 98% friendship. 2% romance and anything yeah. sexual related. And so like what you're looking for is you're looking for someone who is on a similar spiritual trajectory mm-hmm. as you, Yes, who's faithfully committed to a local church and they're in community. Yeah. And if, as long as, like Olivia said earlier, as long as you are attracted mm-hmm. to this young woman, again, doesn't have to be at a 10 out of 10, yeah. but as long as you are fairly attracted to this young woman, then give her a chance because there are lots of great women out there that will make mm-hmm. great partners and great wives and great moms. Yes. And it's worth giving women a shot, just mm-hmm. like you encouraged to give guys a shot. That's a, that's a good point. Kyle, can you just speak on for a second, this idea of there are a lot of people that we could actually marry and have fruitful marriages with? Yes, there are a lot of people we can marry and have fruitful marriage. With. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of exactly what you where you want me to go. Yeah, with that. I'm just curious. Like, oh, there, there, yeah. So basically, maybe you're talking about the myth of the one, the one, the one, the one, the one. The one, the one, the mm. one. Um, yeah, yeah. The idea. Well, and I think the clearest text on this is uh, I think it's First Corinthians seven. Paul says, if somebody is, is a widow, I'm quoting scripture here. She can marry whoever she wants as long as he's in the Lord. And so that's the language, you know, I think, I think that the idea that there is one person out there who is going to perfectly, you mm-hmm. know, it's the Jerry Maguire, if you've, I know yeah, it's yeah. an old movie, you know, it's but a, you complete me, you know, kind of idea. Yeah. So I think there's a lot of freedom to say, you know, all right, God, you know, who, what type of woman, you know, and have your, have your list. Okay. I want mm-hmm. her to have the, or guy to godly characteristics yeah. and local church and phys- yeah. there's gotta be a level of physical and relational attraction mm-hmm. there. Um, but yeah, I just I think there's a lot more freedom versus there's one specific person out there, and I hope I didn't miss him or her. Yeah, yeah. it takes the pressure off. Yes, I was going to say, Charles Spurgeon, a pastor from the 1800s, he said, choose your love and then love your choice. That's good. And so I love that saying because it basically communicates what you're referring to is that you do have the ability to choose who you want to marry. Mm -hmm. And so there are lots of people that you may be compatible with Mm -hmm. and lots of people that you could have a great marriage with. But once you choose your love, then you love your choice. And so once you do become married, then that person ends up becoming the one, your soulmate, S-O-U-L mate, or S-O-L-E mate. Yeah, Yeah. no, that's that's really good. And I I think too, it's like we all have sin and strangeness. Now you need to look out for the sin that is rooted in their lives and, and make sure that they're like repenting and like trying to flee from temptation and all that. But we all have strangeness and quirkiness. It's just deciding if you can live with someone's strangeness yeah. and quirkiness. Well, that's you part, talk about yeah, this Well, a that's lot. part of dating. As I would just say, you have to know, one of the questions I used to ask guys is, okay, are there any red flags? Oh, no, there's not any red flags. Okay, are there any yellow flags? <laughs> and then you get the real answers. Yeah. That, you know. And then you just have to say, could you live with this if this yeah. never changed? You know. And I think that's because someone said a long time ago, the difference between cute and annoying is time. And mm-hmm. so I think sometimes that we think it's so it's so cute how he's always late. Yeah. <laughs> it's like hey, it's going to be annoying really yes. soon or you know mm-hmm. like the example that I've given before is I remember, you know, I've shared this before but I was when we Margaret and I were dating, I I we went to church together a couple times. We lived in different cities. And I remember her saying, "Man, you sing so loud." You know, it's just I love how loud you sing mm-hmm. in worship. And now she's like, you sing so loud. <laughs> I can't. You're, it's off key. You're singing. the. How do you sing the wrong words when they're on the screen? I'm like, I don't know. You're right. They're on. I, you know, so that's a good example of what was cute is now a little bit annoying. When honestly, I think what I've learned is I there are things that I'm more keenly aware of than other people are that actually don't bother other people as much as they bother me. Mm -hmm. And it's great. We learn patience with each other. We learn to see our own sin and selfishness in marriage. And so if you're looking for someone that's perfect, they're always going to fail you. So I think it's important for us to talk uh, about these things. I'd be curious to you, though, what are some practical things tips maybe even I think one of the main problems we see is like people getting to an actual date tips for young people or non-young people older people too that are single or single again for actually like getting to the point of going on a date I think I mean I a lot of I say the younger folks who were around um and our college students like just being around other 
Christians, but in like mixed like girls and guys environments. Yeah. So um, in a way, like we we tried to facilitate that for friendship with brothers and sisters in Christ. But then also that way there's some like interaction, yeah. um, not only always like having That's us great. separated. Mm-hmm. So like I said, just to learn, just like just to be friends with these That's good. people, like with people, boys and girls, but then also mm-hmm. how can create some opportunities just to get that's to know really if you you know have anything you're attracted to and someone else. So I think that's really important. And I think that's where, you know, within our church, like community yeah. groups and just like having different like mm-hmm. social opportunities between groups, whether that's to develop friendships yeah. or something more than that has been really helpful. The unfortunate truth about dating is that number one, it's not the most enjoyable experience for anyone. <laughs> usually no, it's, so that's a good point. it's not something that you can go around. You have to go through it. And so yeah. what you really have to do at the end of the day is you have to put yourself out there. Yeah. You have to take a step of faith, which is That's often good. awkward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, put yourself out there with this young man, with this young woman. Yeah. Hey, say, I like you. Mm-hmm. You know, you just have to step forward and endure the awkwardness that's going to yeah. come from whatever you're going to have to deal with. Um, one Christian like dating podcaster that I used to listen to likes to say, you have to drop the hanky. Like back in the day, it's the girls don't have the hankies. <laughs> they would drop and someone would pick it up. We know that we want as women to be pursued by men. And a hundred percent, that's what we're saying. Yeah, we yeah. are saying like, guys, be the ones to ask girls on dates, yeah. but also women, like don't be afraid to walk up to a guy and engage him in a conversation. They're not going to know you're interested, honestly. Like, I remember there was this guy at church that I had went up to, like, every single week and just had conversations, brought other things up, and we ended up dating. And at one point, I was like, did you know I was interested in you at all? And he was like, no, I just thought we had good conversation. I was like, maybe she'll say yes to a date. Guys want to be be encouraged mm-hmm. and feel like That's you're going to say yes. yes. And I think there's a way to do that without making it feel weird or yeah. strange. Do you yeah. want to say anything to no, that? No, no. I just I think the principle of, of how do you move... We, kind of mentioned at the beginning, how do you move from single to yeah. spouse? And what's interesting is we're doing it, we're in the wild, wild west of yeah. trying to figure out how to do this yeah. in 2024. Like you think about, you know, I've made this joke before, but, um, you know, arranged marriages sound like a dumb idea until you're a dad. Then you're like, I get it. This yeah. is perfect. You know? And, I, but you think about that. There was a, in my mind, there's been three main ways. There's been arranged marriages, yeah. which was basically the parents pick. There was courtship, which mm-hmm. is the parents are deeply invested and involved. And I actually knew several families at my old church, FBC Durham, that all dating happened at dad's house. I mean, mm-hmm. that was just, and it was, I know it sounds weird to us. It wasn't weird. I mean, it wasn't weird. And, that, you know, and, and, uh, and then I think now we've moved to dating, and, and th- which means a lot of different things. But yeah. I think it, the main problem in dating is the uninvolvement of almost anybody else. That's so good. Mm-hmm. Especially anybody that's in authority or has, you know. So I, I think that's where we get in, that's where mm-hmm. we get in trouble. And I do think that helping each other, hey, yeah. like what you're saying, this person. And I think the groups are, when I was in college ministry, I keep mentioning this, but we did these beach projects every Wednesday night. I remember this. And every Saturday night, they required us to go on group dates. Mm-hmm. And so a guy's room, which was four guys, would take out a girl's room. And there was no, there was no romance with it. It's just like, go take them, go bowling, go do. And so by the end of the summer, eight weeks, you, you got through, well, you know, like you went on 32 yeah. dates. And, you know, you meet people. And then I would just say, you know, I don't know if this is how this works. This is kind of subjective. But notice who you're attracted to. Yeah. You know, and be again, if you're in Christian community, for some reason that guy or for some reason yeah. that girl. And, and I think what we're saying based on male or female, do something about that. Yeah. Yeah. And there's things both parties can do something about it. Um, I, you know, I. I love to share this because the first time I heard it, I was like, this is golden. If you think God is just going to drop a relationship in front of you, like drop that guy or that girl on your doorstep, it better be the mailman or I guess better for our day would be the Amazon delivery (laughs) guy. And I think it's a lot of what we talk about, like the pray, guess, go kind of mentality. Mm -hmm. It's like we have to pray that God would open our eyes to the people around us. And then we kind of like see where that goes and and we we take steps and we do that in Mm -hmm. community you know you want to be in a situation like in song of solomon where they're like praising each of their choices and and the goodness of these people i felt that in my relationship with ben two people set us up that saw things in us that they thought were good that would be good together and then we continuously came around different parts of our community and just hearing affirmation from other people that actually gave me that safety and security that peace i needed going into a relationship that I'd never really had before. And so I think there's something about all these things that are really important. But there's a group of people 
we're talking about this group of people, but we're kind of talking around them. There's a group of people in our church who are single and desire to be married and desire to be dating. Um, what what advice would you give to people who are in that season that do desire to be married? Um, yeah. Well, I would encourage anyone who is single to, first of all, acknowledge that singleness is a gift Mm -hmm. and it is a season, hopefully a season if you desire to be married. It's a season that you can leverage for Mm -hmm. the glory of God in an incredible way. If you're single, for example, I know of numerous young men and women in our church who are single, Mm -hmm. who serve our church so faithfully. They are volunteers in our college ministry or they are so eager to go on numerous mission trips per year. When you are married, I mean, this is an idea straight from scripture. Your, Your interest, your heart is divided for example, a couple weeks ago or a couple months ago, actually, um, I went to Brazil for a couple days and then yeah. Puerto Rico for a couple days. I was gone for eight days mm-hmm. and it was challenging for Olivia and I, for me to be gone for eight days. We've got two little kids and mm-hmm. I used to go, there was a time in college where I went to South Africa for a yeah. week and then I went straight to Puerto Rico for another week for a mission trip. And mm-hmm. I just do not, as a married man, have the capacity mm-hmm. to do things like that anymore. And so I would just say, if you're mm-hmm. single maximize your singleness yeah. by making disciples, investing in the next generation. And then what I tell you guys all the time is if you are single and you are interested in being yeah. in a relationship in the future, here's your next step. Become more godly. Yes. One, like, like one that's it. It's like become more godly. Yeah. And, that and I read as you do that, yeah. cultivate holy ambition. Use your singleness to yes. cultivate holy that's ambition. Good. Yeah. Um, what, what, are, what are some other things like, you know, they're desiring it, but they're also trying to be content in the Lord. Like, Kyle, any any helpful encouragement that you would give yeah, that's to hard. this there's person? It's hard. I mean, one of the things I've learned in my preaching ministry is that there's different types of single people. Mm-hmm. You know, there is the there is. it's very different, I think, to be a 23-year-old single girl yeah. than to be a 38-year-old single girl. I mean, yeah. that is, they are not the same person. Um, there's the biological clock that's ticking, particularly on a woman that she feels, especially as she turns yeah. 30, that creates the I'm not... I don't have a man is I may never be a mom, which is a much mm-hmm. deeper thing for people. Uh, you know, when you look at scripture, it's interesting. It, you, the Old Testament, and Andreas Kostenberger said this in his great book, God, Marriage, and Family. Mm-hmm. He says, in the Old Testament, marriage is the norm. Yeah. Like, very hard to find examples of singleness in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. Um, in the New Testament, singleness is uniquely highlighted. That's what you are just mentioning. It's called a, a gift, which doesn't mean present. It means gift as in divine enablement, not yeah. like fun mm-hmm. present to have. That's good. Um then, of course, we have the Lord Jesus Christ, single. We have the Apostle Paul, single. And so you're like, some of these giants, yeah. they show up single. So what, what Kostenberger says is Old Testament, marriage is normal. New Testament, marriage is still the norm, but singleness is elevated and highlighted. Yeah. And then in heaven, mm-hmm. singleness is the norm. That's good. That's just... I mean, we're married to Christ, but you know what I'm saying? Singleness mm-hmm. is the norm. Mm-hmm. And so... I don't know if that how that emotionally hits somebody yeah. who's struggling with singleness, but they are having the experience of Jesus Christ, the Apostle Paul, and every human that will have it in heaven. That's uh, so good. You know? So I think it's hard to. I feel I feel differently in talking to this topic. I'm talking again as a pastor and preacher, talking to men about it than talking to women about it. Yeah. You know, men as a general rule, it feels like you guys correct me if, correct me if I'm wrong can do something in most situations. Mm-hmm more immediately about their singleness. Yeah. It's like, mm-hmm. all right, man, you know. A little more control. Can you, you know, maybe you need to put yourself together a little bit. Maybe you need to get a job and maybe, you know, and I don't want to pick on guys. So I'm just mm-hmm. saying maybe you need to do a little bit more in self-care and all that and grow in your confidence. But mm-hmm. like you could probably like, I feel like I could work with the average guy and be like, dude, I could have you ready in three months. Like, let's mm-hmm. go. Like you'll be ready. And the woman, she might say, same thing, I'm ready, but she's waiting. And yeah. I think the last thing I'll say is there's just a, this is always discouraging mm-hmm. to say out loud, but we just have to say things that are true, even if they're discouraging. There's just way more women in the church than there are men. There are, And so yeah. there's just way more single women in the church. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I try to preach and lead. We have a very, you know, I mean, I'm encouraged over a thousand men at our men's night. Like we yeah. try to have a masculine church as well as a feminine church, having both. Mm-hmm. And, um, but just even in our church, there's just so many more. I can think of immediately off the top of my head, so many single women. And it takes me a little bit more time to start making a list of all the single guys. Well, I think that's a call up to guys. Just stop being kind of lazy and apathetic and actually make a move. If you desire to eventually get married, why not start that today? I think a lot of times guys think they have to have every other area of their life completely figured out. And you need maturity for sure. You need to be walking with the Lord for sure. But guys, you don't have to wait until you're at a certain place in your life to ask mm-hmm, a girl on a mm-hmm. date. And there's so many good women who are just waiting for you to approach them and, and pursue them. Um, 
I, I want to give us just an encouragement from Scripture here. You know, Lamentations 3.25 says, The Lord is good to those who hope in Him, to the one who seeks Him. One thing that we know absolutely that is true is that the Lord does give us good things. He desires to give us good things, but He doesn't promise us necessarily that they will be the specific things that necessarily a heart's desire. There are a lot of promises we do see in Scripture yeah. that the Lord does give us. But I, I, I think we can. it is important for us to say, God is going to give you good things. It may not be what you expect. And it's okay to desire marriage, but we have to make sure that we're not seeing marriage as a promise for God because that's yeah. just an equation mm-hmm. to maybe yeah. end up that's, that's absolutely right. Mm-hmm. Those are the hard pastoral things to say to people. Mm-hmm. You know, this is not something God has promised you in this life. You know, people don't even, like to even hear though it. historically, you know, something like 80 to 90 percent of all humans. I, I think get last married. time you preached it was yeah. like 90 It was something I haven't yeah. looked up the stats recently. And yeah. so I think just, so you want to encourage people. I think to, you know, young men maybe say like, man, you know, we want to, you know, we want to take marriage very seriously. Yeah. It's funny. I, whenever I do marriage stuff, I think you use something similar, but I always use the Book of Common Prayer, which I got from Andy Davis. And, you know, I can't remember the exact phrase, but what I always say is basically marriage should never be entered in unadvisedly or there's a couple of, like there's a couple intense words. Yeah. Like mm-hmm. um, basically do lightly. not lightly or unadvisedly. Yeah. So, yep. yes, th- yep. thank you. And um, so I want to say, like, it's hard to, I feel like as a Christian or as a pastor, mostly as a Christian, you're trying to say both and. And I think we want to say to men especially, look, hey, marriage is super serious. And we probably hit that a lot in, in, in circles. And I want to say, man, like, you know, you're not ready for it right now, but you'll get ready for it. And you'll yeah. be, you know, maybe yeah. you're, you, you, maybe this will, as you, you, you know, a woman has a great uh, power on a man to make him grow up. That's and good. so, you know, you know, there's a story of, of Jacob working seven more years for Rachel. There's a story of, well, I won't go into details about the story, there's a story of, <laughs> of, of David going and killing more, uh, you know, the Philistines to get, uh, you know, uh, Saul's daughter. And so I think that for some guys, it's like, man, you know, and then I think there's a whole nother group, maybe more men than women, but maybe both, that they're just afraid of marriage because they've just yeah. seen it. They're just like, man, I don't know my, you know, whatever. And uh, my, my parents or whatever, and it's like, man... I, you know, marriage is not easy. I'm not saying that, but like, it is one of the great joys of my life. It is one of the, it's where my children came from. I mean, our marriage, it's given me purpose. It's given me romance. Yeah. It's given me relationship. One of the things that and this isn't about marriage, but one of the things marriage does is it like, what does it do? It does something like, it kind of sets the course for the rest of your life. There's a lot of unknown until you're married. And then there's a lot of known, unknown when you're married, but you're like, okay, That's well, this good. is the, this will be my wife and the mother of my children. And, this is who I'm building everything with. And, and until that moment, I, you, you don't have that. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I'm trying to speak to the men, not the person who's sad that they're single. Yeah. I'm now speaking to the single person to say, man, marriage is better. I think we've beat up marriage in the society yeah. a lot of times. The old, you know, my, my brother was getting married. He's a member of a country club. He's at this country club. He tells this old guy's getting married. And the guy goes, you're breaking into prison. Jeez. You're breaking into prison. And I was like, that is how some old men view marriage. Mm-hmm. They didn't have a good marriage. They look back. I mean, I had a group of men one time tell me I would not. They told me this when I was young. I wasn't married yet. They said I would not get married unless you want to have kids. And I was like, these guys are in a, these guys are in marriages. They don't really like their wife. They look. I mean, you meet guys like this, and they they love their kids. They and they're good dads. As much as you can be, a, you, it's, that's hard. It's hard to be a good dad if you're not mm-hmm. your husband. But yep. you know what I mean. They yep. love their boys. They, they take their you know whatever. But they don't like their wife. And. Um, but your wife is somebody that you can, if you're careful, have the best relationship with. Yeah. Uh, you know, her and your kids, or him and your kids, if you're yeah. uh, if you're a woman. So that's good. Yeah. There's definitely a safety and security in marriage mm-hmm. that I've grown to appreciate a lot. As we're closing here today, I'm wondering if there's any last thoughts you have for the people listening. Maybe something that you didn't get to share. I'd love mm. to just like lightning round here from everyone. Mm. I feel like uh, I just want to speak to some of the single ladies who I think mm. maybe have that desire. Yeah. Um, I from don't have a lot of personal experience of sitting in that season, but I think that kind of what Spencer touched on is just like growing in godliness, but then also seeing that marriage is so much like friendship based. Yeah. Like what does it look like to just like cultivate just being such a good friend mm-hmm. to your brothers and sisters in Christ and coming word. alongside the marriages like that you are around um, and your single friends, like using that time and energy, but like becoming just like the best friend you can be and that that's to everybody but yeah. i think that like that will also help prepare you for hopefully the answered prayer of getting yeah. married one day um but i think that 
that would just be like my encouragement is like, instead of just looking like you don't have a place, I think seeing like, no, I, I do have a place. Like you're in the body of Christ with yes. like, we are all brothers and sisters in Christ, married, yes. not married. And then just what does it look like to just be the best friend that you can be? Um, and I good. think that the people who I've seen who've done that really well, like with, you know, with her best friend who's married or with her single friend, I think I've just seen how that has mm-hmm. been like such a blessing to the single, mm-hmm. like her life as well. So I think your life can be very rich in yeah. singleness. And so I, I get like we're all, it's, it's, it's a hard balance of That's honoring right. and yeah. like, you know, seeing marriage as yeah. the gift it is while also honoring and seeing singleness as the mm-hmm. gift it is. So I think trying to leverage a lot of the time and capacity that you can mm-hmm. have in singleness to to deepen your ability to be like a really wonderful friend and that that could be a gift in mm-hmm. potentially future marriages. I think, well I think Ephesians 5, 15 through 21, if you want to check that out on your own later, is a great explanation of that as well. That's great. My encouragement would be to couples who are married, I would encourage them to practice the gift of hospitality toward your friends yes. who are single. Because, you know, the, the single men and women who we are around, many of them struggle with loneliness. Many of them go home at night and their house is empty and they want to have something to do. Would you just be hospitable to the single men and That's women in your circles? Just invite them into your life. I think if, I'm not sure if this was something that you've preached before, but you someone talked about the difference between hosting or, sorry, entertaining yes. and hospitality. Yes. Entertaining, the house has to look nice. We have to have all the nice hors d'oeuvres. We have to have nice mm-hmm. drinks and napkins. That's entertaining. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Hospitality is just inviting people into the yep. normal rhythms yep. of your life. The yeah. house can be a mess. The kids can be going Absolutely. crazy. And so my encouragement would be to married couples. Would you invite some single men and women into your home? Kyle, I just want to honor you. Um, you and Margie did this really well for me. I mean, I, and I hope this is encouraging to others listening to I was almost 32 when I when I got married. Yeah. And Kyle and Margie just can welcome me into their family uh, Addie one time was like, you're like my mom's sister. It was joked on like kind of an aunt, but not. Come over for movie and night, different things like anytime, that. Anytime, yeah, yeah, yeah. just open up the door. And I, it just made me feel like I had a place. It's great. And a, and a family. Even and it was though, blessing us. I mean, that's the thing. It's not just as you, as you're alluding to, it's yes. not just we're serving them. It's like, man, they are serving us. And if you got kids, your kids are blessed by them. It, mm-hmm. it goes both ways. So yeah. Kyle, yeah. last thoughts. Well, I mean, I, this is a complex conversation we've had today. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I don't know that I, I kind of want to just end with what, what Spencer said. I mean, in the sense that I think that we want to continue to say the church is a family. Yes. And that we are, we are a bunch of brothers and sisters. And we are going to walk with each other through singleness, through, you know, dating, through marriage, through, God forbid, but eventually, you know, becoming a widow. You know, because there's, I, I always think there's people who are single and there's people who are single yes, again. Yes, you can't forget about them. I think about them all the time when I'm preaching. You, you become single again through death or divorce. And so that's a whole different type of single person we didn't even talk about today. Yeah. Um, and so I just, I think it's, hopefully people as they listen will give us a lot of grace. Yeah. We, we really want to be helpful and we want to honor singleness. And we also would love to celebrate as many marriages as we possibly could. Yeah, I think that's it. 